Oh, what up, son? I'll be teaching you how to make realistic Roblox lighting because I don't feel like programming today and this requires zero code. So the first thing you should do is make a part in the uh, workspace. And then inside that part, we're gonna put a point light. We're gonna turn the brightness to 2.5, just so it blinds your eyes. Then we're gonna make the range, I don't know, 27. Don't forget to enable shadows. Next, we're gonna take another part and we're gonna drag that in front of this part. And man, these shadows are ugly. It's like I'm looking at an albino Pac-Man kind of. So let's fix that. The first thing you'd wanna do is go to the Explorer and click Lighting. You'll see there's a thing called Technology. I'm on Compatibility, which is probably the worst one. By default, you're on Shadow Map. So you can see, oh, I have the sun shadow now. A shadow from the sun, I mean. But we still have like this ugly albino Pac-Man. If anything, the albino Pac-Man's mouth just got bigger. So what you can do is change it to Future. The other ones don't really matter if you're trying to make a realistic game, because they all just look like albino Pac-Mans. But Future, whoa, Future looks great. You get like a weird ball of reflection and a semi less obvious albino Pac-Man. That's already one step in the right direction. So next, if you click the lighting again, you can see there's like a million settings. You have brightness, which is basically like how bright the sun is. You can just scorch people like it's a nuclear bomb. There's also ambient. So if you want to make the outdoors really red for some reason, you can do that. It's ambient, it's just kind of like the hue the light gives off. So like if you want to make your lighting match the skybox more, instead of being like a dingy gray, you could just do like the blue, because our skybox is blue. So this already looks a little better. We're going to get rid of this because the skybox is ugly. We're going to ignore color shift bottom and color shift top because honestly, every time I use it, it just breaks. doesn't look good. Same with environment diffuse scale and uh, environment specular scale. Because basically this is just how much light bounces. So if you turn this all the way down, you get like really, really sad. Like, I don't know. This lighting looks sad. This is just ugly. Looks like I'm in an old Pixar like render from 2007. Shadow softness is another one you can edit. You can see that like this, it only affects the sunlighting for some reason. Like our own shadows don't get affected, but the sunlighting gets affected. So you can make it, I don't know, this is just up to preference. I think the sharper it looks, the worse it looks. So keeping it at like one looks the best to me. The next thing is data. So like you can see we have clock type and geographic latitude. Clock type is like the time. So as you go through it, it'll be like you're some kind of like Jojo's priest. The sun's spinning around. Bless you. Uh, yeah. Geographic latitude is like, you can watch the sun circle you basically. It's just where the, uh, oh, moon's there now. So this circles you, this makes it go up and down. Let's put that back to normal, because it's dark now. And the last thing inside of lighting is exposure compensation. Basically, it's like... It's hard to explain exposure, but... The higher this little slider goes, the brighter things get. The lower it goes, the darker things get. It's like, you know when you walk outside after being in like a dark room all day, and you just... That's basically what that's for. So now that I covered the actual, like, little lighting tab, I'm gonna cover the things inside of it. So first is Atmosphere, by default. If you don't have Atmosphere, you can just click the little plus and you'll see Atmosphere. Atmosphere is basically like, I think of it like a fog. So like, if you have a super dense atmosphere, you can't see crap. It's really like foggy. And if you have no atmosphere, you can see super far away. So I like to keep the atmosphere like a soft fade because what it does is it takes a skybox and it fades like the edges of the map. It's so like the edges of your vision have the skybox. So let's change the skybox. You can actually just delete this and go to toolbox and look up skybox. Now, don't use anything that has a script in it. Otherwise, your game's going to get like hacked by some eldritch entity. But I'm pretty sure this one's safe. So like we'll use the sunset one. See, it told me it will tell you if there's scripts. If it says there's a script in there, don't use it. But yeah, you can see, like, when I turn up the, uh, atmosphere density, I can see, like, just the skybox. It's just the skybox now. So I can make it so it's slightly faded. This looks good. 
and then we can go back to lighting and we can change the ambient to be a warm like orangish yellow like the skybox so you can see get the match and then we turn it down a little bit so now the lighting on the cube actually matches the lighting in the sky next is bloom so if we were to take this little uh, part and we made it neon you can see that hey it has like a slight feather around the edge so if you make it brighter you can see the feathers stronger so like that's basically what bloom does we have this part that's glowing if we go into bloom and we turn down the intensity well that part doesn't have a feather anymore we turn it back up it has a feather the fun thing about bloom is you can actually turn it up as much as you want roblox has no limit so i could just do like a bunch of zeros and now the game is like rendering a marshmallow for some reason and i could turn the size really high up too so like we have like a little sun right here I don't know, this just looks goofy. But yeah, threshold basically changes like... So if you tweak the threshold, you can see now, instead of just that part glowing, everything that's bright glows. If we turn it all the way up, nothing glows. So finding the threshold, we can make it so certain things glow and certain things don't glow. So you see around 3.32, I mean 28. God, where did I get 32 from? You can see only this part glows, but if we keep turning it down, the giant part that actually has no light in it glows as well. So that's something you can change up to preference. Next is depth of field. Now a few people enable depth of field and nothing happens. So like you see when I change my far intensity, I change my focus distance, I get like it will blur. If yours doesn't blur, you just go to file, studio settings, you go to rendering, and turn your editor quality level all the way up to 21. And then you should be able to see the uh, depth of field now. So basically what depth of field is, is like it can make things close to you, like really close to you, like, man, my face is right here. In real life, this would be blurry and you can see it is blurry. But like at the same time, you can't see things unless you have like, real, well, no, you can see things far away unless you have bad eyes. So if you want to pretend like you have bad eyes, you can put a part back here. And we can tweak the depth of field to make that part blur, uh, blurry, but the one in front of us isn't blurry. So I'm not really a good at this, but it's just a matter of tweaking the settings until you get what you want. And you can see that part in the background is blurred, but when we get close up to it, it's not blurry anymore. There's a lot of things you can do with depth of field. People tend to overuse it so like they have a beautiful map and you can't see anything. It's like you have cataracts. So don't go too crazy with it. There's also sun rays, which is added by default. I don't know, you can make the sun fall down on Earth like looks like an atom bomb is up there. It's another one of those values you can change infinitely, so when you look in that direction, you're blind. I recommend you keep it pretty low. But another a cool thing that sun rays can do is like when you pass by stuff, you see it gives it like a cut, like you get actual light rays. But they're a little janky, so I personally never really mess with these very much. I keep them at their default. Now on to the things that you won't find inside of lighting by default. If you click a little plus, you can see that there's color correction and blur. Blur is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, it just changed like, oh man, I don't want to see anything. I'm going to keep, oh man, where am I? That's what happens when you turn blur all the way up. Uh, and we turn all the way down, you get no blur. It's pretty simple. For some games, I've seen them like add a little bit of blur to give it like this slight like hazy or really humid effect. So that's another one of those things you can edit up to preference. I'm going to keep it, but I'm going to disable it. And probably one of my favorites is color correction. So you can change the brightness, contrast, saturation, and tint color. So tint is kind of like the atmosphere tint, where you can like make everything you see a certain color, or you can do it like it says and tint it just slightly. So if I wanted things to be slightly blue for some reason, I could do that. And you can see everything changes. Instead of just the lighting change, it uh, lighting changing, everything just changes. Saturation, uh, you can make it so everything's black and white, or you can add a lot more color. And this is one of those values that Roblox lets you tweak to infinity. So I can make it 10, and now I'm in Mexico. Add another. <laughs> I'm, now I'm in Florida. Add another. I don't even know what this is anymore. Still Florida. Add another. Oh, wait. Oh. Just keeps, it stays as Florida. You can either have Florida, or you can have like, I don't know, Antarctica, if you do negative 10. Wow. 
So yeah, you could tweak that into uh, Infinity. I'd probably turn it up a little bit, give everything like a warmer look. Or if you're making like a little retro style, not even retro style, but just like a classy game, turn it down a little bit. Gives everything like a faded color. So I'm probably gonna, I'll leave mine like negative 0.2. Then you have your, bless you, you have your brightness, in, which like, that's also pretty self-explanatory. Higher it is, brighter things are, lower it is, darker things are. It's contrast that makes it really useful. So if you turn your brightness up, you're like, man, this is kind of like scorching my eyes. But if you turn the contrast up, it's hard to explain what just happened, but it like darkens shadows. So like instead of everything being super light, only cert like it everything's still bright, but it looks like crisp now. Like this actually looks usable. If we add uh if we just don't add brightness and you add contrast, you can see that the colors just get a little sharper. Like this is at one. It looks pretty smooth. This is probably too much contrast though. Since shadows in your game will become super dark if you mess with this too much. So like if I had a little block dude. That is not a block dude. What is what is that? Okay, okay, little block guy. Looks pretty good. I'd turn it down a little bit. And I'd probably add like I don't know, I'd turn the brightness down a little bit too. Or a little up. Either the brightness a little bit lower or a little bit higher. Either looks good. This is something you can tweak the uh, preference as well. Basically everything is to preference. Since not every game is gonna look the same. So, I'd make my tint color a little, like, slight orange, so everything matches pretty well. So I have this game now. It's not the craziest thing I've ever seen, but man, this sure does look a lot better than it looked before I added any of these tweaks. Now we're getting near the end of this tutorial, so I'm going to talk about the, like, different light types. So if we duplicate this part, you can see there's a point light. There's also a spotlight. If we turn it on and enable shadows, you can see like it comes out of one direction of this uh, part. We could change the angle, so like how narrow it is, how wide it is. We can change the range. So like if you're making a flashlight, you probably want to use a spotlight. And then there's another lighting type, which I believe is the last lighting type. It's called a surface light. And it's basically the exact same as the spotlight, except it's not like circular. It's like a giant cube. And you can change like what surface this is on. So you can put it on like the bottom. Move this part up. And if you had a hanging light, you could use something like this. You add like a little dude. You get like nice looking shadows. It's like a little interrogation light. Now back to spotlights. There's actually a difference between these other than which side of the uh, block they're on. It's like if you add a spotlight to this part. You can actually change, wait no, you can, I didn't even realize, you can change which face it's on anyway, so if you put it on bottom, and you increase the brightness, and the range, and you turn the shadows on, you're probably wondering, well what's the difference between the, these two things, and they look the exact same, and to that I say, if you were to scale the part, the surface light, you can see, oh hey, the light is as big as the part is, but if you scale this, it stays the exact same. That's the main difference between surface lights and spotlights. Now in the description of this video, there's going to be a pack that contains a lot of these things called PBR textures. So by default, Roblox's textures aren't, a uh, they aren't anything too crazy. They're not bad, but like, I don't know, maybe they are bad. So in the description of this video, there's going to be a link to this 11,000 PBR ultimate material pack. So we're just going to click that and you're going to watch my computer die as this gets inserted. There we go. So you see our rocks now look, it's kind of hard to tell. So let's take our little uh, neon part. Let's duplicate it. Let's move it by the rock. Well, 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 looks 3D. That's what a PBR texture does. It has like realistic light bouncing. And there's a whole pack that just gives you a bunch of these really good looking textures. So I'm pretty sure everybody knows what default Roblox wood looks like. But if you add the PBR wood by uh, adding that pack and you go to Actually, just you can open up the material manager. And if we type wood, see we have like a bunch of extra textures. And they all look pretty good. Like this is 
This looks more like roof tile. Like, let's see. These wooden planks. They have a lot of detail in them. Like, eat, like they actually look like they're 3D. So using high quality textures makes your game look better as well. And if I were to remove these textures, they're inside of the material service. Oh, I added two of them. Yeah, make sure there's not two of these. There we go. Finally, I can I can see my Roblox again. So if we go back to our material manager, you can see we only have two woods. Look at this one. This looks so much worse than the other one. So yeah, adding that uh, custom PBR Ultimate uh, Pack Plus made by Walmart Gaming Chair. Shout out to whoever that dude is. Uh, yeah, it makes your game look a whole lot better. Make sure though, because like it's gonna pop up in material service. So make sure there's only one of those, otherwise you're gonna have to like delete it and then your computer's gonna die. So yeah, let's uh let's just add that back so I can end this video with the game looking really pretty. So uh Yeah. This looks pretty good. This is way better than Roblox's default lighting. And this pack contains like a million things. So like if you go back to material manager, you can see there's like this is just wood. Say you wanted like stone. There's a bunch of different kinds of stone and they all have like this cool uh, reflective property. Whoa. Yeah, they all have like these cool uh, reflective. I don't know. It looks like they're 3D, doesn't it? But, like if you look close up, it's completely flat. There's no 3D at all. That's just what good textures do for you. Yeah, that's a. Pr oh, wait, wait, wait. One more thing. In the description, there's also a cool plugin called the Celestial Body Dragger, and you can just control the sun. It makes it a lot easier than trying to, like, edit the values yourself. For night, change your values. Don't leave them for the day values. I'm gonna make you do that yourself, because I already showed you how to change everything. But yeah, this plugin will be in the description. I'm not sure if it costs anything, but if it's free, get it, because it probably won't be free forever. Have a good day!